YouTube, I'm back again today for another game review. And today, I'm very excited to check it out. Hop from Passport Game Studio and Fun Forge. This is for three to six players, ages six plus. It'll take about 30 minutes to play. And in Hop, you are going to be taking rainbows and trying to throw them onto people's fingers. Also, you're going to be betting on whether or not other people will be able to do it. But all the while, it's going to be tricky because each time someone is going to be throwing these rainbows on said fingers, there is going to be some sort of trick or quirk or distraction or somebody trying to mess it up that will make it more difficult. What am I talking about? Let's open it up and I'll tell you what I think. Alrighty then, we're going to take a look at what you're going to get inside of Hop. So first and foremost, we get our handy dandy rule sheet. It's one really big, long, double-sided rule sheet full of colors, pictures, illustrations, and it's very well done. It should have you up and running very quickly, and it can probably teach you how to play the game for the most part right now because it is a very simple dexterity game. Now before we get into the game, I want to give, uh, I want to show you how the box insert works. And I want you to see that, you know, you're going to have a spot for all your little miniatures and you kind of have to pinch them out to get out, which is a little bit annoying. You're going to have a spot for your balloons and for your clouds and whatnot. But also your board does comes unassembled each game and you're going to have this little slot underneath where you'll be able to put everything. Everything fits pretty nice and snug, which is pretty nice. So your box will not be overflowing, which is always a good thing. So in Hop, what you're going to be doing is you are going to be trying to go from cloud to cloud to cloud in order to reach the cop. Also gain cloud victory points. Whoever has the most victory points at the end will be the winner. Now, how do you move up these clouds? There's a couple different ways. The primary way, though, is on your turn, you are going to flow, throw one of these rainbows and you're going to try and stick it on someone else's finger. If you're able to do that, then you are going to move up to the next number on the cloud. So from one to two all the way up to seven here at the very top. Once someone gets to seven or once so someone's balloons have all been popped, the game will end immediately and you will tally up your victory points. The victory points at the end of the game are where you are on the cloud track and also how many points you have in these little clouds right here, which have increments of zero, one, and two. I'll explain how to get those in a minute. But let's take a look at these miniatures because I know you probably want to. These things, Wow, absolutely gorgeous, fully colored, crafted. I mean, they are they're sturdy. I mean, these are these are legit, the real deal. Also, I want to take a look at the board right here because this is really what's going to draw a lot of people's attention. Uh, it, it works pretty well uh, setting together. I mean, I have no real problems with it except for I don't know what these are for. I think they're just supposed to look like a cloud. They just kind of fall off a lot like that. So we just don't play with them. You don't really need them. And the main gripe that I have with this, and I mentioned it a little bit in the pros and cons, and I want to mention it now so I can show you exactly what I mean, is that this top part gets really frayed only after like five or six times playing the game. And I think I only assembled it three or four times. You really have to cram these things on there and that kind of frays away at this. It's not a huge deal, but it is something that I did want to mention. So, let's go over the different components, then we'll get into the gameplay. So each player is going to pick a character, they'll get one of these, they're going to place it on the number one, and then you are going to get one of these in front of you, so everyone can remember which character you are. Next, you are going to get five balloons. When you fail uh, throwing one of the rainbows on somebody's fingers, one of your balloon pops. Also, if you success, or if you fail to bet properly on someone else's throw three times, then you will also get a balloon pop. I'll show you how that works a little bit later. Um, let's just show you how the game plays and all the components will kind of speak for themselves. So first what you're gonna do is you're gonna decide who is the first thrower and they're gonna draw one of these cards. And there are a lot of cards in this game and it will tell you how you are going to be throwing a card. So this is the Blackbeard card. You must cover one eye. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna cover one of your eyes. You are going to pick someone called, I believe it's the Skewerer, who is going to then place their finger out and they have to put their elbow on the table like this. And then you are going to throw the rainbow towards them, with which in this case, you're going to be doing it with one of your eyes covered. And that person is going to try and catch it on their finger. So before that happens, though, everyone else who is not the skewerer or the person throwing it is going to bet. And they are going to bet whether or not they think that the person is going to successfully be able to pull this off. To do that, you are going to get one of these cloud tokens. You're going to secretly say, yes, 
they're going to complete it or no, they are not going to complete it. So let's just pretend for this example, oh, he misses. So what happens now? So the person who threw it, one of their balloons is going to pop. The person who was incorrect, who thought they would succeed, is going to get one of these little crows up here on their scoreboard. If you ever get three of these, your balloon automatically pops and they go back in the middle. The person that gets it correct, who thought they were going to fail, is going to get a dove. And if you ever get three doves up here, you will go up one on the track. Also, if you are the skewerer and that person succeeds though, you're gonna be able to gain a cloud which will have points on it and a little bit of a nuisance. Some of them have zero, which I find a little bit annoying, but you're gonna gain a cloud which most of the time is going to be good while the other person will go up one on the level. Now, uh, let's just go over some of these cards because these really are the star of the show and this is why you're gonna be laughing at this game. You got the lookout, the skewer must point their fingers at you and keep it pointed directly at you so you kind of have to throw it at a weird angle. Some of them will also have other people called a turbulator. A turbulator must wave their hand in front of your eyes and the turbulator will be doing various different things to try and make it harder on you or your partner to succeed. The hot air balloon, you don't choose a skewer. The first player to catch the rainbow gains a cloud token this one almost cost us a broken finger which i thought was kind of funny the boomerang the skewer must toss the rainbow back to you after catching it in the usual fashion this one came up and it was actually kind of fun because the person who uh they actually were able to catch it on their finger but when they tried to throw it back they dropped it tea time where you have to use a pinky the bear hug where you have to uh, where somebody's gonna have to wrap their arms around them not touching them but uh, we played it where you did touch them there's all sorts of these that will modify they'll get you up they'll get you moving a little bit maybe on top of your chair maybe doing some silly stuff but those are really at the heart of the game are these cards right here you're going to go around in a circle you're going to take turns you're going to be throwing rainbows trying to catch it on fingers and once someone all of someone's balloons have popped or someone has reached the top most likely the balloons have popped you're going to tally up the points, which will be your cloud points and what number you are on the track. And whoever has the most points will be the winner of Hop. And that, in a nutshell, is how the game is played. Alrighty then, Hop from Passport Game Studio and Fun Forge. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros, let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, game's not going to be for everybody for a couple different reasons. First, I want to get an odd con out of the way. This box is big. This is a big box. It's going to take up a lot of space. This could have been a much smaller game, and some people might, and I say might, complain that this game is massively overproduced. Now, I personally really like the overproduction of the game. I feel like it fits with the theme and the character and the artwork, but that will bug some people. Also, the game can be exceedingly difficult, especially for younger kids, as it's really hard to throw these uh, throw these rainbows, and a lot of the time it's on the person that has to move their fingers, and yeah, some people are going to be turned off by that concept. Also, this is a very, very simple game. On your turn, you are just going to draw a card and then you're going to throw a rainbow onto someone's finger. When it's not your turn, you will be involved because you'll be betting on whether or not they'll succeed or whether they'll fail, but still, it is a very simple game which might be a turn off to some people. Last kind I have for this game is this is definitely not a game you're probably going to bust out on game night. Maybe as a lighter filler game, but for the most part, this is definitely going to not be a game night game for most people, I don't think. But, moving on to the pros, I really enjoyed Hop. I'm not just gonna, I, you know what, I didn't really enjoy it. I loved Hop. My family loved Hop when I brought it to a couple different parties. They loved Hop. We had a lot of fun with Hop, and it's an easy recommendation if you were in the market for a family game, a lightweight filler game, a uh, party game, you know, a drinking game, or just a great dexterity game. So what did I like about Hop? First and foremost, it keeps each and every player involved on every card because it's either you're watching someone else do it and you are actively involved in watching them do it because most of the time they're going to be doing something humorous or you're betting on it so you really want someone to fail or succeed so you were involved each and every turn in various different ways also there's a good variety of cards i mean there's a lot of cards in this game you are not going to receive repeats and probably until game two game three maybe game four there's a lot of cards in the game which is always a good thing also 
components and artwork absolutely top-notch with one exception which I'll talk about in a second so first and foremost you don't need little miniatures for this game but it definitely adds to the theme and the lure of this game and this game has tons of table appeal you see this game being played by other people and they're going to be laughing they're going to be having fun you're going to come over to the table you're just going to look at this board and see a rainbow go flying by and maybe somebody like pretending to be a unicorn and you're gonna be like okay i want in because that's that's what kind of game this is and i actually brought this to a party with a lot of people who were non-gamers and i started off with four people playing it and and everybody started to look at us like what in the world are they doing but as the night progressed everyone wanted to play the game and everyone was watching the game and there was a sub drinking game based off of this game it's an addictive fun game and, and i really i love this game i i just i can't recommend it enough if you can get past how big the box is and if you can get past it, the fact this is probably not going to be a game night game now moving on to the component that i did not like that was the whole cloud get up it just it does not slide together as nice as you would think and you got to kind of push it down and it makes that creation sound that you don't like and you know I don't know if I can really explain it and do it justice, but it just doesn't fit together as well as I would like it to fit together. But that is a very minor nitpick for otherwise absolutely outstanding components. So overall, Hop looks gorgeous and it is fun. F-U-N fun. It's not a strategy game. It's not an outthinky game. It's not a numerous paths to victory game. This is the kind of game where you leave your brain to the side and you just start flinging rainbows and trying to get them on people's fingers. And I can definitely get behind that. My family can definitely get behind that. And if you come to a party, I hope you can get behind that as well. And we can have a couple drinks together and start throwing some rainbows at each other. That is Hop from Passport Game Studio and Fun Forge, one I absolutely can recommend you check out if you like dexterity games and if you like well having fun but if you enjoyed this review please be sure to click on that subscribe button down below in the comments below let me know what is your favorite type of party what kind of party do you like to go to you like the nice little laid back party where everybody's just chill and talking do you like the raging party with the beer pong and the loud music and maybe there's some dancing going on and some shenanigans going on in here and some funky smells coming out of the back of the backyard if you know what i'm talking about me personally i'm always in the latter category even though i got two kids and you know i'm a teacher blah 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 i'm always down for a rager man give me some beer pong get me a beer bong let's have some fun that's the kind of party i like to go to and surprisingly i feel like hop would fit in in both those scenarios as long as you don't mind getting beer all over your nice components but what kind of party is the kind of party for you let me know in the comments below and as always thanks for your time youtube